Hey, round two with uh, my friend, brother, fellow vet, Kenny Thomas. Many of you know him from uh, the book and movie Black Hawk Down. And we have, if you didn't listen to part one, please click back, listen to the first one, because we're building on it today. And we're we're right in the middle of talking about, um, uh, literally, in between this, you know, I'm like, we've got to con- We've got to keep recording because this is so rich. We're talking about a leadership uh, summit that we're going to be putting on this summer and how we are gathering influencers and uh, people in different spheres that uh, are making a a real impact positively on our culture um, and our nation. And I don't know if people can understand this. It's almost like where we are we have to do a counter insurgency of our own nation and narrative and thought uh, to change the this this trajectory that we're on based on, for instance, this morning I just posted the 13 principles of Black Lives Matter, um, uh, you, you know, that they want to teach to children. And I was I was kind of taken back on how how far off they were from my perspective. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm not a fan of the organization. I'm a fan of the message, you know, that all lives matter, black lives matter. In the military, it was easy for us because it was interesting. A fellow Marine who's a pastor, uh, you know, a black pastor of a church I spoke at, uh, he's a former Marine, you know, me and him have kind of butted heads on critical race theory. I'm like, you know, man, I'm I'm having a hard time understanding this. And we went back and forth. And I said, how come this wasn't an issue when we served in the Marines? And he goes, because we were all green. We're all the same. And I, yeah. I said, man, and he's in ministry. I've been in ministry. I'm going, how come it's an issue now, not the last 30 years? So again, we need to be able to willing to connect with other people of influence in our summit with leaders that actually don't necessarily won't give us the same answer, but have that civil discourse and push and work through. And um, I think that we're going to have something that the American people will be able to wrap their arms and mind around. How about you? Agreed. When you can put people together that are, I I call them the centers of gravity. They, when you may not agree with what they have to say, but when they speak, people listen. And when they, when they move something, the the needle moves. And when you get people like your, your buddy who was in the Marine Corps, who's now a pastor, you get folks like that sitting at a table and you seek to understand. Remember, if we went through one of the manuals that was about this, th- I've got it sitting over here on my desk right now, and it's just on communication alone. Like a leader must be a good communicator, and they can't just throw that out there. They've got to tell you, okay, here's what it means to be a good communicator. One of the very first things is it says uh, learn to be an active listener because none of us are really all that great at listening. If we can sit and listen to understand and not listen to respond, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say to this person because I'm, I'm mad at, I don't agree with them. We put that kind of a table, a round table together yeah. and we sit with these folks and we hear, okay, now I understand what you're saying. Let's now formulate a course of action. In other words, let's formulate a plan. Where do we go out? And, and what all we're doing, you're absolutely right, Victor. It's a counterinsurgency. All we are doing is practicing the special forces mission, which is winning hearts and minds. We're going into an environment that is a different environment than ours. And we're trying to understand the locals and then bring them around to our way of thought. And our way of thought will be a unified message of, I, instead of like team building exercises, I, I have envisioned sort of like unity building exercises. Let's, I think we got stuck. The, during the 60s, the, everything that we learned in school about what Martin Luther King taught and the message that, and then the the 80, the 70s went by, the 80s were, you know, kind of like when I was a little kid and then the 90s, everything kind of just 
moved on by and you're like, like, okay, well, why that it wasn't it a problem? But it, maybe it was still a problem. We just, nobody talked about it. So maybe now it's still a problem, but I think we're stuck yep. at the same message, which is black lives matter. And you don't know what it's like to be me. You've never walked a mile in my shoes. And I will be the first guy to say, absolutely, you're right. I don't know what it's like to walk in your shoes. Please tell me. Right. And then just sit there and listen right. and understand it. And then, then we get to that point, like you said, remember your, your buddy who you, the guy that was just complaining all the time and you're like, hey, do something. <laughs> yeah. Then we say, okay, now we know what it feels like. Man, I can appreciate that. That's tough. I get it. What's our course of action? That's where I think as a nation, we have been stuck. And it, there, the elected officials, I don't think are in a position to do anything about it. I, I think when 9-11 went down and we had shared hardship, the country unified itself for a moment. Yep. The administration got too busy with the business of being an administration and they couldn't help. They couldn't foster that unity. We elected the very first black president. There was a feeling of unity throughout the nation, but the administration got so busy being an administration, they could not foster that feeling of unity and use the, the hardship we were going through. Certainly, uh, President Trump wasn't going to, his whole thing was I'm, I'm to, to let's take care of us. He didn't know how to foster unity. And I don't know that this administration will be able to do it either because they're going to get busy with the business of being. So it's up to us. Yep. And that's, I just talked a lot. No, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. I think sometimes we abdicate our authority and position and responsibility just as people to do things that we need to do, but we relegate it to government. And I mean, Let's take the VA, for example. Uh, VA's broken pretty good on a large scale if you gave it a, you know, and I know Trump was trying to do a better job with it, but look at our State Department. I remember I had a meeting a while back, went in, you know, talk about some stuff, um, and they couldn't even get us in the building because their computer systems were so old. They were, and I just thought, Anybody think that? You're a Marine. You should be used to that. (laughs) Poor equipment, and that's why they feed us crayons. So (laughs) calm down. Eat a red one. You don't know what red does to me. I need a blue. So I'm excited, and I think people will get excited because the feedback that I get from social media is, what do we do? What, What do we do? Because I think people are tired of complaining, and that's what I've been telling them. Hang on. We're formulating a plan of action. Uh, and this is what I've told people from for a while, is in order for our country to change or to improve in every area, whatever it is, but especially in the areas of unity, uh, morality, ethics that we all hold dear, it takes work and sacrifice and planning and strategy. Uh, I, you know, I, I kind of chuckle at the church, the organized church. I hear a lot of people, I'm going to fight for, I'm going to get my country back. I'm going to, you know, and I hear that song and I go. Right. I go, you, what, are, what are you willing to do? <laughs> exactly. I, I'm like, hey, at your church, there's a lack of signing up for children's ministry. Okay. Don't tell me you're going you know, just by your passion, you think you're going to take this country back to get away. Uh, start working on volunteers in the children's ministry at your own church. So it, it is it is going to take everything that I just said and more, uh, but it's going to take the right people at the table who, just like you said, willing to communicate, civil discourse, push in. Yeah. I, I like what Jeff Teagues, we're, we're mentioning Teagues a lot. He's our chief of operations for all things possible. Uh, and he's former special forces and ended up in the unit for many years, uh, really solid man of integrity and great leader. But, you know, cause like, I think yesterday we're running three operations in different countries right now. And so constant comms, me and him from our operations center. 
And he, he he's when we're coming at it from different points of view, he goes, how does he say it? Well, we're in violent agreement, Victor. Yeah. Jeff. <laughs> Jeff's full of, of witty one-liners. He, he is. And it's just like, <laughs> all right, you're right, you're right. Boom. He goes, we believe the same thing. We're just in violent agreement. We're now we're we're and uh <laughs> so it's it's yep. it's gonna be fun to see the level of quality leaders we get to the table. And you, you said during the break is uh, there's a lot that are excited. Well, let's see what happens uh, when it's go time, right? When it's time to get it. Yeah, well, I, believe, we'll, I, I believe we'll get that. I, I want to call, uh, you know, my submission for the name of the project is called The Ark. I like that. Uh, because we've got many rivers to cross through this, this through this storm before we get to the other side. Yeah. And, uh, and I, but I believe in that, that process of, of picking the right people to put on this flagship vessel. And I believe we're going to, we'll find them because one, this is bigger than us. It's, it's God's. I I keep asking him every day, man, are you sure that this is taking a buttload of time? God, are you sure I'm supposed to be doing this? And he's like, yep, don't worry, Kenny, I got your back. And it's, I believe with everything I have that all the right people that will be there on that initial meeting and what that will do is spoke out and they will start calling influencers that they know and we will we will begin to to win hearts and minds in many different communities that's the goal it's not just you know the white kids at dallas fort worth uh, you know on friday night lights it's the inner city kids in kansas city and it's kids in dothan alabama like i I want to, I want to be able to reach all of those. And those people who have that influence in those communities exist and we will find them. Yep. I agree. Now, if you're listening, watching right now and you're going, Hey, well, I don't want to miss this. Well then make sure you go to victormarks.com and sign up for my email. And for sure, sign up at victormarks.com forward slash brief, B-R-I-E-F, for our daily intelligence brief, because we'll be disseminating uh, this information about what's going on through the DIB. Um, and that this matters that you actually sign up for it or you will not miss this. Uh, and we don't want you to. We want you to be able to ride this wave with us together to make a difference in our nation. Now, Kenny, do you want to get into your your book? Um, can we talk about your okay or your music? Yeah, I mean, the the only thing I know about the book is that I wrote it really slowly for people who don't read so fast. Like, it's it's, but it is a good book. Um, so t- I, t- I go back and it, it impresses me when I go back and read it. I'm like, wow, that, that was, I spent some time with that one. It's funny. Uh, the, the book I wrote took five years and um, I wrote it at an eighth grade level, literally. Uh, but your book, Get It On, uh, has, shares your experiences in the Battle of Mogadishu. And I'm uh, it's, it's helped you in, to really put together your mindset and help people on their journey with whatever they're doing, whether they're former military or never have been in. Um, You you said, I like how you said it took you a while to write it. Uh, And it's really, you wrote it for people who don't like to read necessarily. Uh, I I tell you what, I, I appreciate that because like my book, Everybody wants to put stuff on the top shelf. I say, man, put cookies on the lower level too for us regular folk. Uh, so how, how have you found this book has impacted people? I, it's, it's, a, it's another one of those tools that, um, again, outside of God, I have no idea how the whole thing. Everything's easy, Victor, when people say yes. Yeah. Like the music career really wasn't that difficult for me on the front end because somebody said yes and it just started happening. The thing with the book, you know, I watch all these, there's like all these programs people will sell you about how to go get a book deal and how to get a publishing deal and how to write a good pitch and all this. And I'm like, 
I, I didn't need it. They just said yes. And I love it. It was it was Colonel Ollie North was on a book label uh, for Lifeway. Lifeway was a gigantic, still is a gigantic Christian publication. Yeah. It, it owns like most of downtown Nashville. Right. And he was he was working with them and said, you know, Kenny, you really should write a book. Um, you have a chance to help a lot of people. And he was the guy who goes, because I've heard your speech. You talk about get it on. He goes, that'd be a great one. You could sort of do the whole armor of God thing and get it on. And, and I, it took me by surprise because I didn't foresee myself. Victor, I would never have told someone, well, what do you do? Well, I'm a Christian speaker. Right. One, if you tell people that, you'll never get booked because right. they're scared yeah. of you. But I didn't ever think, and he's like, oh, yeah. He goes, it comes through loud and clear. He goes, you never say it, but I can see it all over you on the stage. And I'm like, wow. So when I sat down to write the book, you're, you're going to think that I was very uh, knowledgeable and learned about biblical stories. And I, I really wasn't much more than most people. In fact, when I go back and look at it now, I feel JV about it. But I did so much research and anytime you can immerse yourself in biblical stories yeah. in scripture, it's, it's time well spent. And I, I started comparing I, I, the Old Testament battles to some of the new leadership techniques. And then as I started reading the New Testament, it became to me, it became very clear to me that it, it was just another leadership manual. And it was set the example for others to follow. And everybody was like, he had, he had an A team, Jesus had 12 dudes. That's it. He didn't run out and try and get 70,000 Facebook likes. He just affected the 12 people around him and said, all right, here's the message I want you to go. Here's my intent. Here's the end state. Go make it happen because I'm not going to be here. I'm punching out. Mm. And they're like, well, what do we do? He goes, just do what I did. Like set, set the example for others. It was a really simple leadership message. And so when I started incorporating that in the book, what I love about it is that people just accept it. I'm not preaching at them. I'm not mm. telling them this is the way it should be. I'm just telling them how I feel about it, how I believe in, in the comparisons between the modern day battlefield and what went on back then. And it, it, has, it has made, it has permeated its way into that, the business corporate world where I get booked. And to, to, to put perspective to it all, Victor, I, I, I thought for a while, okay, well, this should get me with my music and everything I do. I should be able to go into the churches and be a guest speaker at a church. And it just was never happening. You couldn't right. get any traction. I remember one night I'm, I'm sitting there, I was out running. I'm like, well, how come I'm not speaking in any churches, God? And the answer was very clear. He's like, I don't need you there. Right. I got left people speaking in the churches. Right. I need you on the front lines yep. where they don't get this message. Yeah. And that's. So the, the tone of what you and I have just done in, in these last two interviews, we're not a, we're not a Christian messaged talk show. Right. But I think people listening to it will get that vibe and they're like, oh man, those guys, they have a pretty strong faith. And that's what we want them to know. Yeah. Because when they're in trouble, they're going to want... They don't know what it is we got, but they see it and they want it. And that's when they might come to you and say, man, I'm, I'm kind of struggling. How did you do it? And that's usually how the, yeah. the conversation will begin. So that's what, to get back to your question, that's what the book has done. I love it. It's opened up conversations to, to guys and girls who are JV about faith to maybe help them take another step. Cause I was in the same place when I wrote the book. I love it. You know what it's uh, and let me just tell people, you really don't get rich over books. Okay. No. I just, I need to kind of let anybody out there know we're not promoting your book to try to make it, that. It's the farthest thing from it. Books are what we put our heart life into, but books are what we put our life and knowledge and experience into so that maybe we don't have to have as many one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, right? Uh, I had a guy ask me today exactly that question on social media. He goes, how did you make it? How did you forgive people? I said, email my office. We'll send you a free book. 
it's yeah, in there, there brother. So I just want to let people know because there's some people like, ah, oh, I don't want to get get the books because they help. And uh, and readers are leaders. So uh, I I had somebody just recently say I was getting ready to commit suicide. And I got sidetracked watching your video on YouTube. And he goes, then I decided not to kill myself, fell on my knees and gave my life to God. And I went right on, right on. And that's, (laughs) that's ultimately what we're doing. Yeah. That's ultimately what we're doing. That right there is a big old billboard. Boom. So I, I, I want people to understand when we talk about leadership or success at any level, it's not this, I mean, look at you, uh, you're an Emmy award-winning producer. Uh, I mean, you were a military advisor for Mel Gibson's movie. Uh, we were soldiers. You've reached a level of success that many young people go and older go, oh my gosh, I love that. But it's not just for your, it's not you just building up your vats or whatever. It's to be part of a mission that God has placed you on to be most effective so that people are helped. And I just want people to understand that. Uh, because we're talking just like we would be doing if we were in our living room, right? Or, or sitting somewhere at a fire. It, it, this is the same. Where, where was the last place we talked? Was it a Ruby Tuesdays outside the Denver airport? It, is that it, what it was? Yeah, it sure was. Yeah. After we had done some really, actually really good training with the front range. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, so I am, a, I'm thankful for who you are as a man and your character and integrity, because I don't know about you, but when you're in touch with many, many people, you get tired of labels and you just want to know what, what is the core of this person? Not, a, yeah. and it's never about direct, uh, like perfection. It's just about the character and the direction that they take that you can trust them. Go back to that word trust. Um, and I, I would say this to young men, whether in ministry or music or, Speaking of music, I remember doing a gig. I was getting ready to speak, and this musician was up. Young guy, he played. It was several thousand people, and afterwards, he he's just like he's lit. He's like, "Oh man, I love this." I just he goes, "I could do this the rest of my this is what I want to do." And I, I said, "Hey, if that twenty minute set is what you're living for, you're gonna be disappointed because there's a whole lot of more minutes in a day." And uh, and I told him the very best thing I could ever do is spend time with the Lord that kind of draw down and com- commune with my creator. Next is to make sure my family's solid, love my wife, love my kids. No matter how many times I fell at it, I still keep pressing forward. And, and then, you know, and then do what God has put or gift to be with or put me in the lane to follow. Yeah, and then and then, it's, then it's what you choose to do with those twenty minutes. Is that just a thing that is there that you're just taking from the energy of the audience, or are you using that like what we talked about earlier? That microphone, that platform, that following is a constituency, and it's part of your responsibility. So, yeah, what do you do with those twenty minutes when you're on stage? Do you have? Um, is there a way that how do you give back? If that's part. And that goes back to being clear on our mission statement. When we're clear on our mission statement, then we will use our gifts in the service of others. Man, I could tell you a story about Gary Gordon and Randy Shugart, the two Medal of Honor recipients from the Black Hawk Down. And those guys died trying to save one guy. Mm. And if you were to ask Gary, and Gary was still alive, let's say, and you could talk to him, he wouldn't have told you, oh, I was doing it because... You know, I'm Delta and I'm, I'm expected to be the best and I'm going to get, he's like, I, in fact, his last words that anybody heard over the radio were that they told him no. He was like, Hey, we got bad guys moving in. The crew is still alive. We got to go help them. And he, they said, denied, denied twice. And he finally gets something. He says, Hey, let me speak to the actual, I don't, I don't want to speak to Kenny and I don't want to speak to Victor. I want to speak to Teagues. I want to talk to the man. And Colonel Harrell gets on the phone and says, Gary, do you know what you're asking? And Gary's last words were, sir, 
were their only hope. Mm. It, mm. Those two guys went down swinging for just by the time they got to that second crash on foot, the, the only guy left was Mike Durant. And Mike will tell you to this day, the only reason he's still alive by the grace of God is because of those two guys. But they were both awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. Mm. It's the only time it's ever been awarded to two guys for the exact same actions. But I can promise you the only reason that, that, that they did that. And I really don't even think that Gary and Randy thought that they, right. Uh, I don't really think that they thought it was a death wish. I thought, I think they thought they could handle it for a minute and, and they saw what was coming, but the only reason they did it, they probably didn't even know Mike Durant's name guarantee. You they didn't know the crew, but they did it because we're their only hope. They would have done it for me. And that's what, the, that's what they'll tell you. We do it. You do it for each other. And there's an important sub lesson to get to what we we're just talking about go to your young man who wanted to spend i've been there i got out of the military that's what i did I, I stayed on a stage playing guitar and singing songs but it's what you choose to do with that time because all those gifts and those superpowers that you've been given we're talking about putting together this team of superheroes yeah. to, to do get, they were delta they were as good as it gets but they understood that all those superpowers they've been given were not to up their contract at the next NFL draft. It was in the service of others. Yeah. And that's, you're gifted. You, you, you have, you have something that is unique to you. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. You're a one of a kind creation of all. There's no other you. You've got a, you've got something that you can offer. Your story matters, but it matters in that it's how you serve others with that gift, and that will just keep coming. The more you can do it, the better you get at it. And and I find that those doors tend to just keep opening as you try and help more people. Well, Kenny, thanks for sharing that story and the insight because that's powerful. I think everybody listening will not forget that they're our only hope. And, you know, people yeah. people want to be able to make a difference in their lives and with their lives. And, and I would tell them, and I'm sure you'd agree, don't live in fear. Fear cancels faith, and it grates me to be around people who are fearful, you know. And, and they don't stay around me long because they're just such life suckers that I'm just <laughs> like, what? Go be afraid. Hey, go be a life sucker. Yeah, go, go be a go be afraid somewhere else. We got work to do, but I uh, I appreciate people who uh, it's not they don't face fear, but they have the courage to press through. But they don't waste their time sitting in it, and uh, right. and that's that's what our country needs right now. And it does. We we, we acknowledge that. the fact that I understand that you're afraid of it, um, we're, but we're going to push through this, and I'm going to help you. Or if you don't think you need my help, I'm going to show you how, how you can do this. Yep. And then it's your choice as to whether you want to do it. But if, you, if you're going to choose to keep standing there and moaning and complaining and telling you how you can't, I can't, I can't because this, 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 and this, you know, I'm, I'm turning the other cheek, buddy. And I'm, I'm moving forward with some people who, who do want to move forward. Yeah. And for those of you who are doing this and you feel people get in your way, just as you tell them. You don't have to agree with me, but don't get in my way. I got to press on and yeah, lead, follow, or get out of the way. These are all three very viable options. Totally. So, Kenny, we're going to have to wrap this up, brother, for now. And yep. I, it, when somebody wants to uh, find out more about you, what is the easiest way to kind of find out, you know, reach out to oh, you? Oh, man. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what I did for the folks who are tuning into this to this uh, this particular cast, um, if you go to my website right now, there's a little link up at the very top. Like right when you get to the homepage, you'll see it. It's just in a little. It's very. Uh, it's sort of camouflaged up there, but there's a link up there we we put in there, and you can get the audio book for free. Oh so that was the only file I could figure out how to make it download Love it. for free. So, and you'll recognize the voice. Um, narrating the story and but you can get it for free um and then the good thing about that is it puts you in touch with me nice so they'll ask for an email for us to mail the file to you and you can email me if you if you got anything you need to say i want to say and and I, and I will get back to you it'll take me a minute but i will get back to you 
So, Kenny, uh, at the end of every uh, show, I ask uh, two questions to my guest. The first one is, it's just perception. What is your perception of me and what I do as far as ministry as a person? Strikingly good-looking man. Um, Intelligent? With a heart like a lion. <laughs> now. If, yeah. If, uh, if God could rewrite David, he would have written it Victor. That's what I have to say about you. It's awful kind, Kenny. Uh, yeah. Humbling and encouraging, brother. Second question, Kenny, is we're all going to die. And uh, guys like us have been there a few times where we're kind of surprised we didn't, but it made us realize that God's hand's on us and nothing else controls that. But when you die, when it's your time, what happens to you and why do you believe it? Oh man, that's that's like a whole nother book though. Like, uh, how do you put that in a one liner? Well, um, what happens to me? I I I go to the father. He's like Kenny, what were you doing? Like I I, I kept opening all these doors, and you kept going down these. You, you know, I'm I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, son. You did mm -hmm. a good job. And I'm like, I know, but how come this didn't happen? How come that didn't happen? Because you kept doing your own thing. And 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 then he'll say like, go back and try it again. And maybe I'll get a chance to come back and try it again, and and try try a couple different paths. But that that'll be. That's the thing I'm looking forward to. And then and I and I want to sit down with, with Jesus and try and figure out the whole relationship that we were taught as a kid of who he is. Because who who I've studied and what they taught me seem to be two different dudes. Like he seems to be more uh well the Jesus that I know seems to be more like us and than than the guy who hung out with pretty long flowy hair and hung out with sheeps and kids, you know, like he seems to like, so I'd like to sit down and talk, talk to them and then figure out, uh, do an after actions review maybe of, of, <laughs> of the mission that I had here on earth the first time. And then ask them if I could just please go back and try it again and get it right. Well, you know, it's interesting because I hear so many responses like this, especially from warriors and, uh, we we do know the Bible says there'll be a time of us ruling on earth, the new earth, for a period of time. Uh, and I I think that the warring won't be over, you know, until evil is completely done. But, you know, for me, I, I love the fact, and I agree with you, I think religion and Christianity, they, they kind of mold and make Jesus out to be something he's not. I, I just simply think he's the son of God. He came down, mm -hmm. ultimate rescue, seek and save, right? Those of us that are lost. And everybody talks about receive him, receive him. He's the one that told his disciples, hey, he didn't say, come receive me. He said, follow me. And he turned and walked. Yeah, and that's, a, just, that's a, they, there's a statue right in front of building Fort, Fort Benning. That that's what it says. Follow me. That's, that's all he said. And I love that you, I, I've never thought of that one. He uh, he was a what did you say seek and sick and save yeah you know, yeah search and rescue he was a sea star guy he was an air force special operator <laughs> <laughs> there he was he, and he gave his life yeah he gave his life one of the no greater love well man thanks for being on the program and uh, I'll see you shortly because I know we're getting together yeah we'll see you soon buddy all right God bless you man go to victormarks.com forward slash brief. Sign up for our daily intelligence brief. We will be sending that information out to you. It's free, and uh, you want to stay connected with us on that. Um, until next time, whatever God has your hand to, whatever lane you're running in, get it done. Mm -hmm.